Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1175. Hey, if you want to download this workbook 1174 to 1176, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to talk about decaying averages. And this comes from a, a teacher who was concerned with decaying averages based on standards-based education. And, and here's how it works. Actually, I'm going to hide this for a second. Normally, we have three scores like this, and we just calculate the average. But of course, an average treats each one with an equal weight. Well, this decaying averages doesn't treat each one with an equal weight. So if the first score is 4, well, well, it's just 4, right? But when you get a second score of 3, here's how the decaying average works. You take the previous one, and now the weight is 0.35. And the current score gets the heavier weight of 0.65. And now this 0.65 or 65% seems to be pretty universal. There's a link down here for uh, the decaying averages, and they pretty much prescribe 65%. So here it is, only two scores. But notice the total for this average becomes 3.35. Now on the third assessment, they get a 3. But the deal is, cumulatively so far, they've had this 3.35. So what you do is you take the 3.35. That 3.35 is already accumulated from earlier calculations for the average. It gets a 0.35. And the current score gets 0.65. Finally, if you have a fourth assessment and you got a score of 4, well, previously we've already calculated of our average to be 3.12. So you take 3.12 times 1 minus the decaying rate plus the latest score gets the 0.65. So let's see how to do this in Excel. All right, so we're going to see a couple different methods. This first method is probably easiest, right? We just say, hey, that first score, we know what it is. It's the full amount. This whole column will have successive decaying averages. But here, what do we do? We say equals whatever the previous amount was. And that's a relative cell reference. So as we copy it down, we'll always get the previous calculated amount times, in parentheses, 1 minus our decaying rate, F4 to lock it. So that remains locked as we go down. And we add to it the current one, one cell to the left times the decay rate, F4. So whatever's previous, we'll get 1 minus the smaller weight. And the current one will always get the weight of 0.65. Control 3. Enter, 5. and then copy it down. So there we get 3.12 and then 3.69. Now, I'd like to turn this off until we enter a score. So I'm going to come up here and F2. There's a bunch of ways we can do this. But I'm going to say if, and the logical test is I'm going to say, hey, look at the cell 1 to my left. And I say, are you equal to double quote, double quote? Now, that double quote, double quote is a zero length text string that checks for if the cell is empty or if it's a zero length text string. For us, it'll just check these empty cells down here, comma. That logical test comes out true or false. The value, if true, I'm going to click right there. If it's really empty, then I want to put double quote, double quote. Again, that's zero length text string. It will show nothing. That means in this column, when there's nothing one cell to the left, it'll show nothing. An actual zero length text string will be in the cell, though, comma. Otherwise, the value, if false, that means I'm asking the question, is this empty? If it comes out false, which means there's something there, then I'm going to run that whole formula. Close parentheses, Control three, Enter, three, five. double click and send it down. Now, one thing that confuses people when they first do a formula like this that is putting a value if true or value if false in is that down here, we see nothing. The actual thing that if put into the cell is that. That formula, even though we see it in this cell, Excel thinks that there is a zero length text string. Up here, the value of false got put in the cell. So Excel thinks that that number is in the cell. And you could actually come over here and do the length function, which tells you how many um, characters are in the cell. Eight. Control Enter, there's eight. And down here, there's zero. So when the if puts one of two things into a cell, it actually does that. And the beauty down here is that it actually never even gets to running this formula. It just sees that there's 
empty cell there and plops that into the cell. So now if I come down here and enter a weight, 5. Mm -hmm. Now it's gone up. But get this. This decaying average, if you go and get a really bad score, remember, most of the weight is going to come from the current score. That's the mm -hmm. idea behind it. So it's going to go down quite a lot. Control Z, Z. Now, this will work just fine. We have a single different formula and then a second formula copied down. But sometimes it's nice to have a single formula in the column. So we just have one formula, and we can copy it down. So watch this. I'm going to copy this in Edit Mode, Control-C, Escape, F2, Control-V. Now, that will work, meaning two cells to my left. And that one will work because it's locked. But this one won't. So watch this. I'm going to move it. I'm going to drag. Whoop. Now it's looking at the previous cell. Control-Enter. Now I'm going to copy this up. And now I need to deal with the fact that that should show a 4. So F2. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to get tricky. I'm going to take this, which is 1 minus that, times the 4. And then this one's already calculating one cell to my left times the 0.65. And so really, when you add these two together, it will add up to 1 times this 4. So watch this. I'm going to say if the cell above me equals double quote, double quote. That'll check whether it's empty or not. Then I want the 4 times the 0.35. Otherwise, please look one cell above. So the trick to this is that just for this first uh, cell, when it's there's nothing up here, it's going to get 4 times 0.35, that right there, and 4 times the 0.65. The rest of the time down here, the formula will dump one cell above, and our formula will work just fine. Control Enter, and then copy it down. If we come down here and 5, it works just fine. Control Z. Now, it might be really annoying that you have an empty cell there. So let's copy this again. Control C, Escape. F2, Control V. Now I'm going to move this again over here. Boop. And I'm going to move this one again. Boop. And now if I enter this right now, it's not going to work because it's checking to see if it's empty, F2. Well, now there's text up there, right? Or it's not empty. Well, not empty won't work because right here there's text. And down here, there's going to be numbers. So I'm going to just have the logical test be is text. Close parenthesis, and that will work. So if you need a label, which most of the time you do, that'll work. And then double click and send it down. Still, another way to do this is if you like this, uh, check in whether it's empty. I'm going to Control C in Edit Mode, Control V here, and then move this over, and then move this over again. Now notice it works, but here's an amazingly cool trick using custom number formatting. Zero. Well, it's not going to work, but I can actually amend this formula right here and not check whether it's empty, but check whether it's zero. Control Enter and double click and send it down. And then change the custom number formatting. Control 1 to open up the Format Cells dialog box. Number, category, go all the way down, custom. And I'm just going to force whatever I put in the cell to show up as decay average. I put it in double quotes. That means no matter what I type into this cell, it's just going to always show that. So we have a 0 there, and it works just fine. But if you look up in the formula bar, you can see, oh, a 0 is in there. Look up in the formula bar, actually text. Look up here, there's actually nothing. All right, so in this video, we saw how to deal with decaying averages in standard base grading. We had one solution that had one, two different formulas. But for all of our formulas, this was the base part that calculated our decaying average. We then saw a formula that could check the cell above if it was empty to see if there was uh, no text there. This formula works in the whole column. Then we check to see if it is text, one formula in the whole column. And finally, we saw how to use a formula that checked up here, and then use custom number formatting to display our title. All right, we'll see you next video.